Welcome to the Modern Renaissance Man Show. I'm Ben Copeland, Modern Renaissance Man. Glad you could join us this night on whatever station we happen to be on. It's probably still an access station and we're probably still not making any money. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, who knows? Uh, maybe you're catching this uh, on, on something else, but uh, we're still having fun at it regardless of where we're at. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed is uptown these days. Have you seen the new, the new police vehicles, the little two-wheeler uh, oh, vehicles that they're running around, little pedestrian kind of cars that they zoom around in? I saw today that a private individual had theirs. Of course, they almost ran over five people on the way down the sidewalk. Uh, gosh, now we got something else to walk. It's as if walk, crossing the street uptown is not bad enough. Now you're going to get run over just walking down to your work or lunch or something if you work uptown. Something annoys me I wanted to share with you. I get these letters in the mail, and I had one I opened the other day. It says, it is very important that you call me about your mortgage. I call this critical spam. This is a company that wants to call, wants me to refinance my house with them. It has nothing to do with my mortgage, but I hate these letters. They should be illegal. <laughs> Nobody should be able to say, open immediately, response required. And it is nothing more than junk mail spam, and they are messing with people who not be illegal. Uh, one of the things that, that is an interesting, that's not related topic that I was thinking of the other day, um, for people that work uptown in high-rise buildings, you ever thought about how far you actually travel in an elevator? You know, when I, when I was sitting around and uh, doing nothing one evening, I decided to calculate this out. I ride the elevator 19 floors, probably roughly 10 times a day. That comes out to, for a, say, 50, 49 uh, week year to over 900 miles in an elevator. Now, if we could get those elevators to travel linearly instead of horizontally, if we could go, I mean, uh, instead of vertically, go horizontally, just think of how easy we could travel around the country. Just hop in an elevator and boom, you know, you're in Texas. You know, and um, another thing I've been thinking of is occasionally I've been known to talk to myself. Um, I've decided that I don't want people to think wrongly of me or think something's wrong with me so I'm going to buy one of the new Bluetooth telephone things and plug it into my ear and it won't be connected to anything but I can stand around and talk to myself all day long on the street in my car just anything I'm doing and people won't think I'm just cool because you know, I got a Bluetooth they won't realize that I'm sort of psychotic and and you should avoid me anyway get your Bluetooth if you're talking to yourself and that way people won't make fun of you uh, Another thing that I just wanted to mention about was that uh, don't have a teddy bear in Iran or the Middle East and name it something Islamic. Lady got, this is in roughly December, we're shooting 2007, you're seeing this show uh, in January. Uh, lady named her teddy bear some Islamic name. Got 15 days in jail and they're going to kick her out of the country too for naming her teddy bear Muhammad or you know, Abdul or something like that. I tell you what, with, uh, with what's going on in this country, uh, let's just be thankful we can call our bears whatever we want to. And uh, with that, I think I'll get on my soapbox. Tonight I decided to uh, go into an issue that um, may generate some uh, controversial email. Hopefully it'll generate some kind of email. And if you don't like the topic, at least you're thinking about it. Uh, Special needs people. Special needs people deserve equal treatment, but not at the cost of others' rights. 
I've been seeing situations where special needs people are pushing down the rights of others. It's going beyond equal chance. A recent trip to Disney in 2007 saw people with wheelchairs and parents with strollers. They were getting treated special, more than equal. They ran over people without an apology. They moved to the front of lines. The worst were the overweight people in their little scooters and parents with children in strollers who were five and 10 to 10 years old who didn't even be in strollers. These people were running, running, trying to run me down with no ifs, ands, or buts about it. At CMS, our school system can't manage stuff. Special needs children get attention before other children. Non-special children have to wait sometimes in class for attention because of the special needs child that's in that class. Sometimes they have a teacher dedicated for one child in a class that may be 30 or 40 in size, and they have to wait for that child's issues to be addressed. Now you may think that I sound uncaring or mean, but I do care about equality. Let me ask you these three questions. Do special needs people deserve more than others or simply equal? Special needs people say they want an equal chance or should it be a better chance at the loss by others? Should we mainstream special needs children to the disadvantage of others? All people are special. Some are not more special than others. And that's the way I feel. And with that, uh, we have no band. They all are sick with the flu. But one thing we didn't do is that you're seeing this show the 1st of January, so Happy New Year's to you. And uh, hope you stay on for the whole 2008 seasons of uh, the Modern Renaissance Man. So what I want to do is instead of uh, me just carrying on and talking here for a while and you going out to get some popcorn, uh, I want to insert some music from some previous shows and hope you'll enjoy it. I'll be back in just a moment. Well, guys, glad you're here. Let's turn on some tunes. I pleasure. Missed you. <laughs>
Excellent tunes. Hope you enjoyed that. I've been Copeland, Modern Renaissance Man. I guess I, I had probably edited in probably some Dorna Anna or maybe some old trip stuff or maybe some real, real old time your stuff. I'm not sure yet, but uh, I know it was great tunes because that's all we have on the show. Um, one of the things I wanted to go into, as usual, is the Public Library of Charlotte. The greatest place to go to get your videos. And I picked up some videos. Uh, I think I want to give you one that was uh, a sort of a sleeper. Dean, I don't know if you can get a focus in on this. Uh, Dean Smarts, uh, filling in director, excellent. This is actually a classic film. And uh, so we can get that. We can get that. No, I don't know if that picked that up. I'm trying not to get the light on it. It's The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. And you think that's an exciting film. Well, let me tell you about this film. This film is done in Italian with English dubbing. And they don't tell you that on the box. So when I'm watching this and I'm seeing the, you know, the, uh, Hi, I'm Robinson. How are you? <laughs> Hola. <laughs> or whatever, or whatever the, the words were. That's Mexican, or Spanish, excuse me. But anyway, uh, it's, uh, I, I fell out about halfway. I was ready for Robinson basically to die on the island. And, uh, well, so, you know, go to the library. You can find... Films like this to help put you to sleep. Robinson Crusoe Public Library. Prices are great unless you're late. Um, if you don't like that, blame George. We blame George Bush for everything from the weather to, to uh, well, we ain't got there yet. We're in, in January. We ain't got a president, new president yet other than uh, Pelosi. Um, yeah, but she's still the speaker, excuse me. Um, but anyway, so uh, uh, we've got a website out here, the Modern Renaissance Man, mrmtv.org. Check it out. Um, key phrase to remember, merriment is a necessity. Watch dumb movies like this once in a while, even if you go to sleep on them. You just need to do things that are just sort of silly once in a while. Enjoy life like that. Uh, send me some email. If you don't like the sub box, you don't like things that are going on, you want to tell me how you're blaming George in your life, mrm at together.net. Here's another milestone. You're watching this show probably the first Friday night in January 2008. Well, in Four days from when we're taping this, I turned 50 years old. So, while you're thinking of how young I actually look, yes, I am actually 50 years old. Uh, so those of you that, who thought I was probably running in my early 30s or so, you're crazy. Anyway, um, so I turned 50 on December 14th. Uh, if you turn 50 on December 14th, send me some email. Let me know. Uh, check out the blog site. Put a comment in there on what it's like to turn 50. And... Uh, have a 13 year old, that's a good one too. Uh, the Modern Renaissance Mobile, yes we have one. And uh, there's a project show coming on later this year, you'll have to watch that. Uh, it's the same little car as the last one, just a different color, it looks like an ugly blue speed racer uh, <laughs> with racing stripes on it and hopefully it I won't get, it's not ugly. Yeah, it is sort of ugly, hopefully I won't get pulled over. Um, I'm still trying to find the chapter in the Scientology book that tells me how to get an airplane. Uh, my guest and I chatted, uh, uh, I think it was about two weeks ago, and he asked me if I would convert to Scientology to get an airplane. Could I be bought for that? And I couldn't say no. Um, anyway, so we'll see. doesn't look like an airplane in sight. Kennedy Space Center project, that's coming on later on this year. I'm telling you things because this is the first show for the year. Um, expect some more music specials. I mentioned in 2007 about having a Disney special. That nah, won't happen. Uh, some conflict of interest there. I don't know that I can make the show without it looking like advertising. So we'll probably talk about things at Disney, but uh, we won't actually show any footage of it. Um, guess what else happened this month? I guess it was November. Charlotte has light rail. <laughs> Lynx, yay, the Charlotte Lynx. Um, basically, they had uh, thousands and thousands of people rode it the first day that it opened. As I understand, most of them did get nauseous because of the up and down motion. They actually did okay, so it passed the test. Uh, light rail, uh, it's here, and it will be in, under construction and still, as I understand, 2039. Uh, so you'll be seeing light rail construction for, I know, the rest of my life and probably yours too. Uh, and you'll probably be 50 if you're 20 now by the time it's done. Uh, so light rail, watch for it, and there's going to be a bunch of lines. Uh, with that, I want to get a person out here that's a very interesting man that I've gotten to know. Uh, and that is a worldly man, in my opinion. And uh, with that, Tony Hodgson, come on out here, and uh, uh, we're gonna have a chat for a while on some some topics. Yeah, really, thanks, sir. And uh, get him to come on in. Uh, glad you could join me. How have you a doing, seat there, sir. Doing great. Uh, 
Tony, uh, and guess what? I after uh, I think I printed all your bio stuff. Yeah, I do have it here. Gosh, I'm not as slack as I thought. No, that's good. Uh, Tony originated in England. That's true. I was and, born there too. You were born there. <laughs> and uh, one of the key things I, I saw about Tony was that uh, you graduated from Robin Hood University, <laughs> oh, exactly. University of Nottingham. Absolutely. You probably hear that ten thousand times. I knew the sheriff too. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have? I absolutely. <laughs> weren't doing anything wrong, were you? No. No. no just drinking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of the neat things that uh, I wanted to get Tony on here for was the, the, the worldly view. You uh -huh. have, you've been around a lot, and your uh, your occupation uh, saying, seems like it's carried you quite a few sure. places of the years. You were uh, an engineer, is that correct? I was. I uh -huh. started off as an engineer and then went into uh, engineering management. Mm -hmm. And then started working with a company that was world global company. Now what was that? I'm trying to remember. That was uh, uh, Westinghouse. Westinghouse. Because you came over and you were young, like what, 23? I was 23. 23 when, I when came you came to, to yep. came to the states. Yep. yep. Uh, that was came, cool. Came over on the Queen Mary. It was the uh, it was the time when uh, jet transport was just starting to take over from the the old steamships. Ah, oh, hey, I got some of my own and, stuff. I'm a little uh, older than me. I. Uh, <laughs> When I came over, it was the last steamship voyage across the Atlantic. They closed it down. That's wild. Yeah, yeah, that it was is a great wild. trip. I read that about you. Yeah. Um, now, you're married, I'm and married. you have two children. I have four children. Four children. Four children. Whoa. Uh, I have a girl. You had time with, with him to travel to we enjoy had, life. We had plenty of time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you come home. You and know. you got a couple grandchildren. How many of those? Have, I have four grandchildren. Wow. Four and a half, actually. Yeah. I got one that's going to be born in April. Now, are they anywhere, live anywhere near here? Or? I have, I have uh, two children live in Charlotte and three grandchildren, and two will be in Greensboro. Greensboro, wow, well, that's you know, right up the street. And then I have another son that lives in Raleigh, uh -huh. and I'm sure they have a cat right now. Pretty soon they'll be starting. Well, that's what, that makes it easy to get around then for uh, the, rest of the family all in the same right. state like that. Right. That's cool. Um, one of the things that... Uh, I didn't coach Tony on that we sort of do on the show is the uh, idea of questions and, and uh, issues, uh, just sort of off the cuff of uh, sort of springing them on him. Uh, I know that Tony uh, uh, likes to discuss key critical issues, I think that are going on, God, the world, and other things. Um, but one of the things that with you having been, and I want you to tell about some of the countries, the different countries you've been to, how does the U.S. compare? some of the places you've been because you've been in Asia yep. Australia what are the places well uh, particularly some of the third world countries when you when you go to those and you come back to the United States I always wanted to kiss the ground when I got off the plane mm -hmm. <laughs> because the United States is such an advanced uh, country and uh, people I don't think appreciate the freedoms that you have in the United States and the uh, access to uh, to warm homes, uh, homes with running water, uh, homes with bathrooms. Many countries in the world don't have that, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think we appreciate that. What is your favorite outside? Favorite, I guess, outside of uh, England and the U.S. Uh, I think my my favorite country is uh, China. Really, because of the variety of people. Uh, food varies from one uh, state to other, and uh, it's very, very uh, good tasting food. Mm -hmm. and How are the people? The people are very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, when I when I first you know we get the China, propaganda. When I first went to China, I'd always thought about the communist nation, how they mm -hmm. hate Americans. That's not true at all. That's well, all Chinese government propaganda, and uh, and American propaganda too. And true, yeah. that's true, but. Uh, the Chinese just love America, hmm. and they all want to come here, and they, they're much more educated about America than Americans are about China. Like and, uh, Did you see the Great Wall in the whole nine hours? I saw the Great there? Wall, went wow. uh, walking, uh, went all the way up into northeastern China, where it's 35 degrees uh, below zero, wow. and, uh, in a place called Harbin, China, they have ice festivals. Oh, is, oh is I, I've seen that. The uh, big they, sculptures the big and sculptures, things. They, they, yeah, they make that's the, cool. They, they make the Great Wall of China out of ice. Out of ice. Out of the river. Yeah, I've seen some neat pictures yeah, of some yeah, stuff yeah. from that. No, China's a wonderful place. And what do you think about Australia? You know, you've been there. 
I, Australia is like, uh, it's, it's a country that's huge, yet it has a population that's uh, maybe the size of New York. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they all live around the perimeter the edge, of, yeah. of this desert. So it's very, very Is it that inhospitable? The yeah, it's, very, it, it's, it's, it's a real hot, uh, inhospitable place. But they have great natural resources, and the people are laid back, really take life easy. Mm -hmm. And the countryside is just gorgeous. I know they're real particular that if, uh, if you want to uh, try to get a work visa, they're very they, particular about who they let come in. Years, years ago, they used to uh, invite people to go there. They would pay your passage. You know, you know how it got started no. way back. Hmm. Uh, England used to ship the convicts in a boat oh, yeah. to Australia. That's how the uh, Australia penal got started, colony. the yeah. penal colony. Okay. And then much later, when they were looking for uh, workers, they would pay people in, in, in uh, the UK and uh, to go to Australia, they'd pay their passage, they'd find accommodations for them, give them jobs. Yeah, but when it was mostly criminals over there, I guess you uh, <laughs> do something then. <laughs> in fact, my sister went over there in 1968 mm -hmm. that way. All of her family went up over in a boat, and, and the Australian government paid for their passage. Well, let's, let's, let's bring the discussion home. Uh, you said, I think, in uh, the information that you sent me, you came to Charlotte around 69, is that In 1969. Correct? I came so, down from Philadelphia. What's the good, what, in, for you, what is the good, bad, ugly about Charlotte? What I miss about Charlotte is that uh, everything in the downtown area that was there in 1969 has completely been mm -hmm. taken down. And the only thing that's left are maybe the occasional church that I was left I think the BB&T. The BB&T building? The building is an original okay. that was there. Okay. I think it's only it's like uh, about a block or so. Right. But uh, for, for, for most American yeah. cities, Charlotte has really been uh, torn down and built back up again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I miss some of the old parts of Charlotte. So what do you like? What keeps you there? Uh, I like the climate. I like the access to the uh, ocean and the, and the mountains. And yeah, I like the wide open spaces. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I heard somebody the other day talked about one of the things they liked to visit in Charlotte was uh, uh, food selection. Mm -hmm. It's pretty mm -hmm. good. And these are like people from Cincinnati, which I typically think of Cincinnati as a fairly large right. town. Right. And they were saying, that particularly in the downtown area, mm -hmm. that the food selections in Charlotte have grown. It, it is so much better than it was when I first came here. When, mm -hmm. I, when I first came here, Charlotte was a liquor, what they call a liquor by the drink, a brown <laughs> bag uh, mm -hmm. I remember that. state. And... Uh, there were no no restaurants here to speak of. Okay, you had the Open Kitchen, was yeah. one of the star restaurants back then. That's still pretty good. But uh, restaurants make their money by selling liquor, and uh, when there was no uh, liquor being sold, the restaurants wouldn't come here. But uh, since since they did that, food's gotten better. Um, unfortunately, Tony, we're gonna have to call this one wrap. But we're gonna pick up again the next show. Tony's coming back with me on the next show. We're going to talk some more esoteric kind of uh, topics. Okay. Um, but in leaving, uh, I'm going to switch and let the band take us out some music or whatever time's left. But of course, I wanted to thank uh, the crew, camera in particular, Ray, our cameraman who's here for the night, Dean Smart, fill-in director. Dean has been with me for two and a half years, uh, audio assistant director, and he's jumped in tonight to take up for a missing Dan Honeycutt. Thanks, Dean. Great okay. working with you. Um, check out the website, mrmtv.org. Send me some email, mrmattogether.net. I'm Ben Copeland, the Modern Renaissance Man. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Happy New Year and 2008. And hope you come back. Good evening. Fish bird.